morning. Good morning. We are so happy that you have joined us today, both in person and online. You might notice that there are some smaller people in here today. So we are changing some. Yes, you, yes, Bill. Bill. <laughs> so we are changing some things up. So we just um, the kids have joined us. They're gonna sing with us, and then they will be um, dismissed. I'm hoping that I remember to do that. So if not, you know when you can get up and go. <laughs> we'll figure it out. So it's gonna be. It may be a little chaotic today because this is our first time. First time, but we will make it through. And. Uh, I think that is it. Oh, and communion will be at a little bit different time because they will also be singing and taking communion with us. Um, so, with that being said, would you please stand to sing with us? How's everybody doing this morning? Great. Great. I know the weather was good this week, and as I talked with uh, Bob McIndeller, he's like, probably going to have to have long dawns tomorrow, but, you know, we'll take what we can have. It was a beautiful week. Um, 
Welcome to Creve Corps Christian Church. If you are new here, we just wanted to say we're glad that you're here to worship with us. And um, if you haven't made your way over to the Welcome Center after service, out these double doors and to your right, there will be someone there to greet you. Um, we'd like to get in, to know a little bit more about you. Um, so and just say we're glad you're here. And as I usually mention to all those who haven't maybe made it over to the Welcome Center to tell the ladies, uh, hi, um, go out these double doors to your right and greet our Welcome Center people. Um, let's just make this a huge, big family reunion. And... Um, but uh, there, if you came in and you didn't get a bulletin, we have bulletins, and it keeps us up to date on what's going on. There's a few things I would like to go over. I'm one you'll have a handout here for uh, save the date of the postal drive uh, for our food pantry. They, the postal service in East Peoria, they collect uh, canned foods, and uh, we help them unload their uh, trucks to, and get it over here to our food bank at. Uh, and at the church. And uh, there's usually always a lot. I wasn't able to make it last year, and Billy said there was quite a bit, and uh, so he was really busy. And uh, he's usually pretty good at making it, so he'd appreciate, and I'm sure I'll probably be there too, uh, appreciate all the hands we can get. But we have a save the date in here, and uh, that is May 13th. It's a Saturday, May 13th. It says time noon, and then it goes till you're done. <laughs> um, and the more guys we have, the more ladies we have, the quicker we'll get done. Um, so uh, mark your calendars. If you're able to make it, we would gladly appreciate that. Um, and uh, then there is, a, like it says like here, last year we had over 6,000 pounds of canned goods donated, and I think there was like two people helping out. Uh, so that's impressive. Um, and then uh, I did want to also mention that there is sign-up sheets, ladies, for the Mother's Day brunch. Uh, if you are free on May 6th at 10 a.m., um, there is a Mother's Day brunch. There's a sign-up sheet right next to our offering plates and our snack pack. Um, so, and it's $10 to come and just fellowship together with mothers and uh, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time just to fellowship together and enjoy each other's presence and have some food. I mean, food always goes great. Um, and then there is also, there is something that's not on this that we were, I was asked to... Uh, announced that May 4th is National Day of Prayer. There will be a sign-up sheet. Um, I don't know if it'll be there today. It may be there next week, but it's there today. It'll be there today after service. There'll be sign-up sheets um, for a time, a lot of time to pray. So the, the, a lot of times are 30 minutes of prayer. And just FYI, you don't have to say something for those 30 minutes. Just want to let people know that you can sit and listen to God and what he's saying to you. This is a conversation. Um, but there's 30 minutes intervals, and um, there will be sign-up sheets. If you're able to make it here and pray, there will be someone here to pray also with you or uh, you know, just to be here to welcome you into, into prayer. And, uh, but if you're not able to make it here but you still want to pray, sign up, and you can do it on uh, if you're at home or if you're on your job and you have the time to be able to do that on the job. You're welcome to do that as well. There will be on April 30th a uh, prayer focus point that we want to be in unison together in prayer and focusing our prayer. And our prayer team will have that for us on April 30th. That doesn't mean the whole entire prayer has to be that. You pray what you feel God's telling you to pray about for our churches, for the country, for uh, those who don't know Jesus. And uh, let's just keep this day completely focused in on prayer. And then we'll also add that prayer focus so that way we can together be in unison, um, which I really like that. Um, I think I have most everything on up to date. So it's nice to see the kids here and uh, joining us, and I look forward to that too. So yes, things will be a little bit different today, but that's all right. We're okay with that. Um, and uh, so uh, if there's any other events coming up, you can check them out in your uh, bulletin of up, up and coming events. Um, and today I go into the Psalms, and it's funny because we're wanting to be in unison for our prayer. Um, I'd heard on a uh, prayer focus thing with the Psalms that actually across all denominations, we all agree on the Psalms. So whenever we are listening and praying or reading the Psalms, we are in unison throughout the world with brothers and sisters in Christ. So there's a lot of times where our call to worship, we go to Psalms because we are in unison with the entire body of Christ, which is very cool. So Psalms 24, verses 1 through 4 says this, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. 
Who may ascend the mountains of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by false gods. Let's be serious here, people. Not one of us are able to stand in that presence. But we have Jesus who stands for us, and through him we are able to stand on that mountain with God. And that's who we are worshiping here this morning, is the one who has saved us and made us worthy to be able to stand before a holy God. How amazing is that? I would ask that you all rise and, and pray, and if you're not able to rise, don't feel bad. This isn't like you have to stand in order to pray, but um, if you're able to stand, we'll pray and we'll, get, we'll continue our worship. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We pray that uh, you are blessed today because your people have come together to praise you. Lord, we love you so very much. And God, we pray that you would speak through Bill and through our uh, praise team here that we would appraise you and hear the words of your voice through your written text. Father, we thank you for those who have come here to join us today. And we pray for those souls outside of this church that don't know you. It breaks our heart to hear there's people that don't know you. Father, may we be uh, tools that you use and through us you can save some people, Father, that they would get to know you. God, in this dark world, we pray that there is some light because we are faithful to you. Father, we lift up those who are on our prayer list for the sicknesses that we have going around and for the ailments that we have going around. We pray for those, but God, we, our hearts are in tune with yours, and we are worried about this world who, with these people that don't know you. Uh, thank you, God, for this blessing of these kids coming and worshiping with us here this morning and going to partake in communion together as we uh, partake, Father. Uh, we just love you so very much, and we ask that your presence be here to fill up this entire church and every little crevice that's around here. And Father, may we invite you into our lives outside this church. So God, may today be a blessing to you. May tomorrow and every day after that be a blessing to you because we love you so much. We thank you for all that you do, but especially for sending your son and for that great and awesome third day. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
actually Rhonda Reed's. I'm a little, so please excuse me. Um, John 16, 13 through 14 says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. As I share, if the ushers would come forward, please. Above my head, clear up there in that recess, white with a light on it, what do you see? A cross. In my hand, I have a necklace. It's a cross. A friend of mine gave this to me. I rarely wear it. I don't like something around my neck. Uh, but I keep this in my office. Even here on the pulpit, we have a broken heart being mended as a cross is laid over it. And at least for me, I see the cross as the, the means by which God mends the brokenhearted. We who are followers of Jesus, if you think about it, are a little odd. We make the means of execution central. What if it was the gallows and a noose, uh, a syringe for a lethal injection, an electric chair from days gone past, a guillotine of the French Revolution? We think of those things and it's, it's barbaric, but we place the cross at the heart. Isn't that odd? But you know why we do so. Because at the cross, Jesus became that Lamb of God taking away the sin of the world. At the cross, your sin and mine, and the punishment, the penalty for it, our rebellion against God was answered. And so the Apostle Paul would write to the church in Corinth, very familiar words to us. This is in chapter 11. I received from the Lord 
that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now I'm going to put our children on the spot. And if they don't do it, Miss Lori, I'm going to put you on the spot. That's okay. Miss Marna's back yet. Okay. Paul ends that little section in telling us that in this meal we proclaim something until he comes. What are we proclaiming? It's like school, all eyes are down. <laughs> Don't call on me. We proclaim his death. We proclaim His death. Hence, the cross is central. Even in this meal that we're about to share, we are making a proclamation. We are preaching. We are speaking truth. We are pointing to His death. But don't miss the rest of that sentence. We proclaim His death until He comes. There's our hope, folks. This isn't all there is. This isn't the end of the story yet. He's coming again. And when he comes, all will be fulfilled. But until he does, as we gather to worship as his people, we meet around this table, we share in the bread and in the fruit of the vine, we remember his sacrifice out of the love of God for us. So I'm going to ask the men if they would distribute the, uh, the elements. Hold on to it, please, and we'll partake together. There is both uh, the open for you to take and there are the closed packets as well if that's what you prefer.
Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and after blessing it, he gave it to them and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we come, we come to worship, to gather around your throne and to join our voices with those of all creation. You are God. And we know that we can do so only because of your great love, which has reached to us to be reconciled to us, to remake us through Jesus in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. We thank you for this holy time. We thank you for this holy meal. We thank you for new life in Christ. In him we pray. Amen. At this time, we are going to dismiss the kids to go over to Kid City and all those who are helping with that. Good morning, all. It is good to see you. It is good to gather to worship our Creator, our Redeemer. 
You do my heart good. I don't know if you know that or not. You do my heart good because we gather together as God's children, as brothers and sisters in the faith. And uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. You do my heart good. <clears throat> Several years ago, I was in a car traveling to a meeting with another preacher. We were talking about ministry. We were both young. Uh, I was involved in a brand new church plant. And I said something, I don't even remember what the words were, about the work of God's Spirit, about the Holy Spirit's role in our ministry. And just as we drove along, he very calmly jumped on that and basically denied that the Holy Spirit filled any role at all for work of the church today. And I asked, somewhat sarcastically, I guess, because sarcasm is my first language, I said, do you therefore believe more in a dynamic duo than a holy trinity? That was my question. And essentially, he said yes, so far as it speaks to the Holy Spirit's involvement in ministry. Now, I believe that he was reacting in, in concert with what he had been taught to what at the time was being seen as the excesses of the charismatic movement, and that's a topic for a whole nother day, uh, which I'll probably never, never address. But I think he had pulled back so far that he believed in a dynamic duo, the Father and the Son. And the Spirit had somehow gone on vacation. Personally, I prefer what Francis Chan writes in his little book called Forgotten God. Francis writes this, The Holy Spirit is as essential to a believer's experience as air is to staying alive. The Spirit led the first Christians to do unexplainable things, to live lives that didn't make sense to the culture around them, and ultimately to spread the story of God's grace around the world. That's the Holy Spirit's work. Or moving beyond a human author like Francis Chan, how about we just listen to Jesus himself? In John chapter 16, and Jennifer read a portion of this, in John chapter 16, I want to begin at verse 5 and read through verse 15. The context is the upper room of the night of Jesus' betrayal. When you read from John 13 through 17, you get the the discourse of the upper room. And in this small portion, we read these words, and I'm reading from the New American Standard. But now, I am going to Him who sent me. And none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. And I'm going to pause there for a second. I know it's hard for us sometimes to imagine. But you have walked with Jesus for three years as one of his apostles. You've heard his words. You've seen his actions. You've felt his touch. You know your devotion to him. You know the developing belief, whether it's fully formed or not, that he is God's anointed, the Messiah. And all of a sudden he says, it's to your advantage that I go away. As my friend Jared Walker put it, mind blown. <laughs> Jesus goes on. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own initiative, but whatever, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will disclose to you what is to come. 
He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. It is to your advantage. I don't know about you, but when I put on my sanctified imaginator and I place myself in that upper room and I hear those words, the first thing I am is confused. The second, I feel a slight tinge of anxiety rising. Then I have fear that sweeps over me. And then I have a full-blown panic attack. I'm overwhelmed. Jesus, you can't leave. Jesus, please, don't leave. I can't live without you. Which, of course, he knows, and he's got all taken care of, but I don't know that. And Jesus tries to help us understand. He, he speaks to us in the New